In this video, we will talk about the elbow x-rays interpretation. So in our approach to elbow x-rays, we follow a three-step system, starting with assessment of the bones in step one. Then in step two, we assess the joints. And in step three, we assess the soft tissues. So starting with the step one, which is the assessment of the bones. So in assessment of the bones, we trace the edges of each bone looking for cracks. So in this example that you can see right here, that's an AP elbow x-rays. And in assessment of the bones, we start with the humerus. We trace the edges of the humerus to look for any breaks in the cortex of the humerus. So we look for any breaks alongside the edges of the humerus and we can see that there is no breaks here and then we move on to the radius we start distally in the radius and we move on proximally and same applies to the ulna so we trace the edges of the radius looking for any cracks and we can see that there is no cracks on the radius and then the ulna we make sure that there is no cracks alongside the ulna edges and we also check out the olecranon, which is here, to make sure that there is no cracks alongside the olecranon. Now we pay more attention while checking the radial head and neck, because those are a common area of fractures, the radial head and neck, so we pay more attention in checking them. We also check the areas of the superimposition, and that is the area of the joint. This is easy to miss a subtle fracture in this area so we focus more here looking for any fracture now if you see the fracture first thing when you look at the x-ray then you assess the fracture you start with it and then you look elsewhere on the x-rays on the second example here we can see a lateral x-rays of the elbow joint and in assessment of the bones on the lateral view we can see the trochlear notch better. Uh, that is the trochlear notch here. You can see it better on the lateral view. And you can also see the olecranon better on the lateral view. And you can also see the articulation between the radial head and the capital lamb better also. And on the lateral view, you can also see the coronoid fossa here and the olecranon fossa here. Now, after you finish checking those for any fractures, you also uh, check the edges of the rest of the bones here. So you check the edges of the humerus, the edges of the radius, and the ulna, looking for any fractures. Now, in assessment of the bones, you also look at the general appearance of the bone, looking for decrease or increase in the density of the bone. Osteopenia is decrease in the density, and osteosclerosis is increase in the density. And you also look for abnormal trabeculation, such as in Baget's disease. Now, after you finish assessing the bones in step one, now you move on to step two, which is assessment of the joints. So in assessment of the joints, you assess the radiohumeral joint, which is this joint here. And you assess the ulnohumeral joint, which is this joint here. And you assess the radioulnar joint, which is this joint here. And in assessment of the joints, you look for the shape of the joint, and you look for the congruity of the bone ends, and you look for narrowing or asymmetry in the joint space. So you check each of the joints for these findings. So the radiohumeral joint, you check the joint space for any narrowing or asymmetry, and you check the shape of the joint and the congruity of the bone ends, and the joint here looks normal. And you also check the ulnohumeral joint, you observe the joint space, the, you check for narrowing or asymmetry, you check the shape, and you check the uh, congruity of the bone ends, and the joint here looks normal. Same applies for the radio ulnar joint, and it looks normal here too. Now after you finish that, you check the elbow lines, and in the elbow we have two lines, we have the radio capitular line and we have the anterior humeral line. So regarding the radio capitular line, 
So the radial capitellar line is used to look for the radial head dislocation and the radial capitellar line is drawn from the neck of the radius to the capitellum and should intersect the capitellum in all views. So it should intersect the capitellum in the AP, lateral, and the other views of the elbow. So on this anterior posterior x-ray of the elbow joint, if we drew the radial capitellar line, we start from the radial neck and we drew it towards the capitellum and we can see that it intersects the capitellum here. So this is a normal radial capitellar line. But if there is a radial head dislocation, the radial capitellar line would not intersect the capitellum. And an important note to mention is that the radial capitellar line is drawn from the radial neck and not from the radial shaft because the radial neck is angulated in respect to the radial shaft. Now let's draw the radial capitellar line on the lateral x-rays of the elbow. So we start from the radial neck and we draw the line towards the capitellum and we can see that the radial capitellar line intersects the capitellum on the lateral view in normal elbow x-rays. This is another example here of a lateral elbow x-rays and if we draw the radial capitellar line here we can see that it does not intersect the capitellum meaning that we have a radiohumeral joint dislocation we also have an ulnohumeral joint dislocation and we have a radio-ulnar joint dislocation in this patient. The other line is the anterior humeral line. So the anterior humeral line is used to check for subtle supracondylar fractures on the lateral elbow x-rays. And the anterior humeral line is drawn down the anterior surface of the humerus and it should intersect the middle third of the capitellum. So if we divide the capitellum into thirds, the anterior humeral line should intersect the middle third of the capitellum. Now the anterior humeral line is drawn only on the lateral elbow x-rays. And if we drew it on this x-rays here, so it would intersect the middle third of the capitellum because this is a normal lateral elbow x-rays. Now, an important note to mention is that in normal children younger than four years, the anterior humeral line might intersect the anterior third of the capitellum, and this is normal in this age group. Now, after you finish assessing the bones and joints in step one and two, now you move on to step three, which is the assessment of the soft tissues. In assessment of the soft tissues in elbow x-rays, you look for the changes in density of the soft tissue, you look for abnormal bulges, and you look for swelling and foreign bodies in the soft tissue. Now, important note is that the higher density soft tissues are the muscles, while the lower density soft tissues are the fat. So on this AP elbow x-rays, the soft tissue is between the bones and the skin here, and we can see a line here. So uh, this line here is between the muscles, which it has a higher density on the radiograph, so it looks more white. And it is between the uh, fat and skin here, which has lower density, so it looks more black. And we can see another line here, and this represents the area between the muscles. So this is one muscle, and this is the other one, and between them, is some fat so that is why we have this line here we can also see some decrease in density near the joint so this is also some fat near the joint but other than that we cannot see anything abnormal on these x-rays because this is a normal uh, elbow x-rays now on the lateral elbow radiograph inspect for elevations of the anterior and posterior fat pads now the fat pads are seen on the x-rays because the fat has lower density than the muscle here so it would uh, look more black and would be seen on the x-rays and you inspect for the elevation of the anterior and posterior fat pads now the anterior fat pad that you can see right here 
is located inside the coronoid fossa and the posterior fat pad is located inside the coronoid fossa here. Now the anterior fat pad can be seen in normal x-rays but the posterior cannot be seen. And this is here is a normal lateral elbow x-rays so we can see the anterior fat pad right here but we cannot see the posterior fat pad. Now the fat pads are only seen on the lateral elbow x-rays and elevation of these fat pads is known as the sail sign and elevation of these fat pads indicates a joint effusion and it occur in elbow trauma, fractures and inflammation. So in these conditions in elbow trauma, fractures and inflammation, the elbow joint would bleed and the fluid would collect at the elbow joint and this would push the fat pads away from the joint and this would lead to elevation of these fat pads. So the anterior fat pad would be elevated like that and the posterior fat pad would be seen and would be elevated like that. And this elevation is known as the sail sign. So on this example here, we have a lateral elbow x-rays showing a capital lung fracture right here. And because there is a fracture, there is a bleeding and there is fluid collection pushing the fat pads away from the joint. And you can see that the anterior fat pad is elevated like that. This is the edges of the anterior fat pad and the posterior fat pad can be seen and it is elevated too, meaning there is joint effusion resulting from the fracture that is here. Now regarding the pediatric elbow x-rays, so the pediatric elbow x-rays is harder to be interpreted because of the ossification center's order of appearance. So the order of appearance for the elbow ossification centers is collected in the mnemonic CRITO. So the ossification centers appearance starts with the capital lump which appears at one year of age, then the radial head at three years of age, then the internal epicondyle which is the medial epicondyle which appears at five years and then the trochlea which appears at seven years of age and then the olecranon which appears at nine years of age and finally the external epicondyle which is the lateral epicondyle which appears at 11 years of age and all of those are collected in the crito uh, mnemonic so for example let's say if you see the capital lump ossification center the radial head ossification center and the trochlea ossification center in an elbow x-rays but you don't see the internal epicondyle which is the medial epicondyle this means that the medial epicondyle is a fractured in that child so that is how you benefit from knowing this moving on to talk about the elbow x-ray views so the primary radiographic series for the elbow injuries include the anterior posterior and lateral views and those are the most common ones to be ordered and those are indicated in elbow injuries and various elbow conditions but there is other views that can be taken to look for specific elbow injuries or they are taken if the patient can't move in some trauma cases and those include the modified trauma views and there is many uh, of them and there's the additional views and there is also many examples of them finally let's talk about some injury examples and let's apply the steps we learned on these examples so starting with this example here so we can see a lateral elbow x-rays of a patient who fell on their arm and we can see that there is a fracture annotated by this arrow here so this is there's a fracture here and there's also um, more annotations showing the uh, elevation of the fat pads meaning there is joint effusion so this is the anterior fat pad and this is the posterior fat pad of the elbow both elevated uh, but let's ignore these 
annotations and let's apply our steps. So we start with assessing the bones in the first step. So we assess the edges of the uh, humerus looking for any fractures and we can't see any. And then we uh, move on to the radius looking for any fractures. And we also check the ulna and we can see that we have an olecranon fracture here. And then we assess the joints in step two. So we assess the radio humeral joint. We see uh, the uh, articulation between the radial head here and the humerus. And we also check the articulation between the trochlear notch here and the trochlea here. And then we draw the radio capitella line. So it starts from the neck of the radius and it would intersect the capitellum, which it does. And then we draw the anterior humeral line, which is on the anterior side of the humerus and it should intersect the middle third of the capitellum. And finally, we check the soft tissues. And in this case, we have elevation of the elbow fat pads. Now on this example here, we have an AP elbow x-rays of a patient who fallen on their arm. And we can see that we have a subtle radial head fracture here. And it is annotated by this arrow. On the last example here, we have an olecranon fracture here. And we can also see that there is an elevation of the elbow fat pads. This is the anterior elbow fat pad. And this is the posterior one, both elevated, meaning there is an elbow joint effusion coming from the intraarticular fracture here. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like and comment your ideas and questions. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called the elbow and forearm trauma masterclass. You can check it out. Link will be in the description of this video. And the slides for this lecture are available on the first link in the video description.